What's going on YouTube? This is Stevo, and it's finally time for me to introduce the Pokemon Premier League to you all. And actually, uh, the Pokemon Premier League has already been around for a season, so now I'm just very glad to be joining it. Uh, special shoutouts to um, the individual who actually extended the invitation for me to join. Uh, there was a drop from Division 2 of the league, and so I was able to enter the Eternity City Enders in uh, at the behest of Don Fanatic. So thank you very much, Don Fanatic, for actually getting back with me and allowing me to pick up that spot. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Pokemon Premier League, it is, of course, a draft-based league, like a couple of the other ones that I've been involved in. The main difference with this one, of course, you guys probably already saw my audition video. So not only do you have to audition to be a part of it, but also once you are selected to be a part of it, uh, the drafting is done a little bit differently. Each player receives a budget of a hundred million pounds to use throughout the entire season. Think of it the same way you would fantasy football or the way players are paid when they're playing different sports. Uh, each Pokemon then becomes unique and of course better players are going to be paid more. So ostensibly the better a Pokemon is, the higher the value, the more points or pounds you have to spend on it. Uh, of course, um, I believe uh, Ryquin and Don Fanatic and a couple other guys are based in the UK, so it will make sense that the denomination here is pounds. Now then, with all that aside, how do you really figure out how you're going to spend your money on all these different Pokemon? You have to have at least eight, no more than 11 different Pokemon. Um, of course, that makes things a little bit interesting as far as not only drafting strategy, because you want to spread your money out appropriately so that you can actually get the different Pokemon that you want, but at the same time, you still have the other drafting strategy where you're trying to pick up things that other people might want before they get to them. Uh, and that's where you have the Attorney of Cities Enters coming in to Division 2. Now I'll give you a quick peek at the pricing for the PPL to give you guys an idea. Um, you can see that, for example, some Mega Pokemon like Mega Audino are only worth 10, while other Pokemon like Mega Venusaur are worth 20. So. There can be quite a disparity in pricing based on not only tiering, but overall usage. Uh, I believe there's even some twos in here, like Shedinja and other Pokemon like that. So it really is going to just depend. I believe that they all sat down and really came up with the pricing for these Pokemon based on their own experience and their tiering and different factors. And I think that they did a pretty accurate job. Of course, everyone's going to have their own opinions, but I definitely agree with how things were basically panned out to be as far as the pricing for different Pokemon. Now going into this, uh, I would like to give yet another shout out to um, Aquaclauncher on Twitter, because he actually sent me a team, I think about a week before um, the week, the same week that I was invited to join. And so I hadn't really done any drafting planning really, because I was working and uh, I had just gotten invited. So I hadn't really been planning and I had to go and look up the rules and all that. But he sent me a team based around Mega Law Punny. And I was like, you know what? I don't have that much experience with Mega Law Punny. Mega Law Punny is pretty fun to use. If you've been watching my LBA battles, and I'm actually going to be putting up some ABL battles as well, Mega Law Punny has also beat up on my Pokemon a good bit. Uh, so why not use a Mega Law Punny? I like his design. It's pretty useful. Let's start with that. And so I went into this draft thinking that I wanted to build a team around Mega Law Punny. It's a pretty versatile Pokemon. It only does it get good support options but it also is just generally offensively threatening. Uh, it can very easily knock holes in a team, and if someone's expecting high jump kick, it's fun to run other moves just to kind of throw them off balance. Now, with Mega Law Punny, of course, that comes with other uh, team openings, I guess, that are not as useful. And so I kind of deviated from the core that Aqua Contra sent me because, of course, it is a draft. Um, but at the same time, I did want to pick up some of the aspects of of the draft that he had in mind. So um, here you can see the Eternity Enders right here. And you can see that I went with Megalopunny, Tyranitar, Talonflame, Florges, Toxicroak, Reuniclus, Noivern, Levani, Kabutops, and Stoutland. Uh, you'll also notice that I have 1 million pounds left. And of course, I didn't use up all of my allotted slots uh, just because I didn't, number one, I ran out of money. But I didn't plan on using all my slots from the beginning. I wanted to have one slot open just in case. Now, 
in the beginning of the draft, things actually went very, very well. Um, Mega Lopunny through, I want to say, Reuniclus, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Things went really smoothly. I actually didn't get sniped until, oh, no, no, no. I actually got sniped right here. The Miami, uh, Miami Rotom Heat sniped me with Electros. I really wanted to pick up Electros. Mega Lopunny, Tyranitar work relatively well together. Uh, number one, Mega Lopunny has good general offensive pressure, but Tyranitar has that nice unpredictability part to him where he can be something very, very bulky, have a huge offensive presence, run a mix set, run a fully special set, set up Stealth Rocks, just be your Pursuit Trapper. He can do a lot of different things. Uh, and he can also set up sand to not only counter other opposing weather, most notably rain or sun, uh, but he can also just chip away and negate my opponent's leftovers. Now, one of the main things that counters Lopunny, of course, is Talonflame. Mega Lopunny can fake out Talonflame, but I was really worried that some of my uh, opponent, opposing coaches were going to pick up Talonflame just because of how good Talonflame generally is. I had not drafted Talonflame in a league before, and so I decided to go for it. Uh, Talonflame puts a lot of offensive pressure on alongside Mega Lopunny, so it seems like a pretty good choice. Talonflame also serves as an interesting bulky pivot. Um, it allows me to use U-Turn, and to a lesser extent, the more bulky willow sets where you're allowed to spread some burns around an opposing team. So I was I was interested in using Talonflame, and at the time when I was planning for this draft and I was kind of at work, checking Skype, going and doing things at work, checking back with Skype again, it just really, I wanted to pick things that I already had a good pool of bred Pokemon from. Like I already have two or three Law Pony sets. I have five or six Tyranitar. I think I have five or six Talonflame as well. So it gives me a lot of versatility in my sets, and I don't have to spend a ton of time breeding to get the different uh, Pokemon or sets that I want to have. Now, losing Electros, of course, this is a snake draft, so the draft came back this way, and then it came back this way, and I was actually planning on drafting Electros um, on the fourth turn of the draft, but since I lost Electros, it made me kind of take stock and think, okay, before I get sniped again, what are some other things I know I'm going to need? And my experience in drafts has taught me that fairies are really, really important. Because not only do they get tend to draft get drafted very early, but they're also very instrumental once you actually get into the battles. Uh, there aren't that many fairies to go around, so you must draft them early and draft them well. Now, I did not want to spend a ton of money on my fairy, and fortunately, the other coaches helped me out with that, because by the time turn four came around, Clefable, Sylveon, Azumarill, regular Gardevoir, Mega uh, Altaria, they were all gone at that point. So it really limited down my choices. I think even at that point, Aromatisse was gone. Um, so it really came down to, okay, I'll just pick up Florges. It's a good middle of the road in, as far as price goes. 20 is going to be the highest that you see, whereas 2 is going to be the lowest. So I'm not spending the crazy amounts on it that I had already spent with Mega Law Punny and Talonflame. But at the same point, it finally gives my team some dedicated special presence in the offense, if I want to run it that way. Wish Passing, Aromatherapy, and a Stab Fairy type attack. Excellent. All those things work very well with the Pokemon that I've drafted so far. Tyranitar and Law Punny attract burns a lot. Uh, if Talonflame is unable to roost, it's going to be very simple to pass a wish to it if I'm able to set up the right situation. Um, and then as far as especially Talonflame being able to switch in and take the steel type attacks that are aimed at Florges, that's generally pretty easy. And then most of those Pokemon using those stab steel type attacks don't want to take a Flare Blitz. So I thought that the synergy there made a lot of sense. Um, I do... I did not intend to snipe... Um, the Nita Queen's Park Rangers quite as hard as I did with Raikwin, and be sure to go watch his uh, analysis draft video as well. I'll be sure to link that on Twitter at some point. But I definitely sniped him right when he was about to pick Florges, but he got Whimsicott, so that worked out okay for him. Now, moving forward with the draft is where I really deviated from the original team layout that uh, was seen for this Mega Law Pony Tyranitar Talonflame core, and I wanted a fighting type. Now, once again, at this point, uh, turn five of the draft, I've already spent a very large amount of my money, and at this point, it's kind of going to be unfeasible 
to get any more Pokemon that are worth 10 or more, 10 or 10 million or more rather. So I really needed to plan things from here on out. And so I went ahead and planned on getting at least, uh, I wanted to get Sand Slash or Stoutland. I wanted to get Lee Vanny. I wanted to get Reuniclus. I knew I needed a dragon and I wanted to get a fighting type and a stab poison type. Um, I would have also accepted a grass or a grass poison type too. So I had several factors that I was looking for moving into the draft. And I figured at this point, I need to make sure I get something that is not going to be too afraid of Sucker Punch and at the same time uh, can threaten fairies. And that really limited the types of things that I could draft. I was At first I was considering Conkledur, but it just didn't really fit in well with the Pokemon that I have here. Like he gets Mock Punch, but I don't really like him. He's kind of just like a, a loss of momentum. He, he doesn't really have any way of raising his attack besides bulk up. Really slow. Not not great. Plus, he's just kind of susceptible to getting burned. And burn plus sandstorm is just going to whittle him down even much, even if he has guts. I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to use Conkleder. I don't like Conkleder. Uh, I also considered getting Hitmontop like I did in the ABL. Of course, that was actually drafted the turn before in the draft, so that was out of the question. And um, some of the poison types I was thinking about, I considered Tentacruel, but that got drafted earlier. And I was also considering um, Roserade and Vileplume. I figured that maybe I should wait on my grass type and do it a little bit later, and I finally settled on Toxicroak. Uh, Toxicroak not only has the nice priority in the form of Sucker Punch, now I have Fake Out, Sucker Punch, and Gale Wings Talon Flame 4 priority, but also he gives me a nice stab poison type attack to hit opponents with. Gunk Shot is incredibly powerful, and even without a Life Orb, it's just nothing that you really want to switch something into raw, unless it resists it. Uh, also, poison um, fighting being four times weak to psychic, that's very, very easy to switch Tyranitar into. So the synergy is there for that. Furthermore, Toxicoke can run specially based sets. It gives a nasty plot, vacuum wave, uh, to a lesser extent, belch, um, and dark pulse. So I have a few different options that I can run with it if I see that an opponent's team is a little bit more especially defensive or physically defensive. It kind of depends. But I like the overall utility that Toxic Croak provides. Uh, I don't see myself using it as too much of like a taunter or anything weird like that. But at the very least, he allows me to soak up Toxic Spikes and means my team's not very weak to those either. Now, after that turn of the draft, I really wanted to get Reuniclus. Um, I was tempted to draft Reuniclus a turn before. They both were around a nine. Uh, but I thought, okay, I've been swept by Reuniclus in the LBA. I don't really want to deal with it in this league, and I've used Reuniclus before, and I've battled against it a fair bit, so I, I feel very comfortable picking Reuniclus. It's a great fit with Tyranitar. I can run Trick Room with Reuniclus and even have Tyranitar at a minus speed nature and have them both sweeping or something weird. Talonflame still gets its priority off with the Gale Wings, so Reuniclus fit in quite nicely here with Magic, uh, Magic Guard blocking the Sandstorm damage, and so I just had fingers crossed for Reuniclus. Um, I believe Alakazam was already taken at that point, so I don't think Alakazam was something that I could actually choose, but at the same time, Reuniclus fits in way better than Alakazam for this particular team. Alakazam's a little bit too squishy. But uh, anyways, though, no one did choose Reuniclus, so I was very happy about that. And then it was at this point I kind of stopped to take stock of my first six Pokemon. Still didn't have a Dragon type. Now, if you're just looking at the other teams in the draft... Uh, the Osaki Eevees, they have a fairy type in their top six. Um, over here, we have a fairy and a dragon type in the top six, over at the Pittsburgh Pyro, rather. The um, FC Eeveeton, they have a fairy and a dragon type in their top six. I just have my fairy sitting on that. We have a fairy and a dragon type in the Portland Timbers. We have a fairy and a dragon type over here in the Ned Queens Park Rangers. We also have, um, well, there's no fairy or dragon type here, but... Uh, well, I, I don't know that she has the dragon type actually with Dredigan. No fairy type though, but several Pokemon that can utilize Dazzling Gleam. And then we also have the fairy type over here on the Miami Rotom Heat. And finally, no fairy or dragon type in the top six for the Parasect, uh, Germain. So, the point of all that is, most of the teams by this point had their fairy type and their dragon type, and I still didn't have one. A lot of the good ones were gone too, um... Everything from Dragonite 
to Mega Altaria. Um, even the both of the Lattes were gone at that point. So Anhy Dragon, I think, was also gone even in round one. I'm pretty sure Raikwin got that. But anyways, though, my point is I need to get my dragon. Otherwise, I'm going to be left with slim pickings. And it just doesn't make sense to not have a dragon offensive presence. So I actually decided on Noivern. Uh, my other options at the time included things like Dragalge uh, and other, like Tyrantrum, I think, was still available. I didn't want to draft Tyrantrum because I have him in the LBA. And Dragalge was a little bit slow for what I wanted to use my dragon type for. Noivern pairs up with Talonflame pretty nicely for that original idea that I wanted with the Electros for the, the Volt Switch type deal. I want to have the utility of being able to switch around. But also Noivern is incredibly fast and can use switcheroo. So it allows me to cripple some walls or at least in interrupt some team structure just by switching some items around. Uh, Noivern also nicely gets boom burst, which means now I have a way of dealing with things that are setting up substitutes. And if I don't want to use boom burst, I can utilize infiltrator to hit through substitutes. So I thought that Noivern was a good utility pick at that point. It didn't fit into my overall vision that I had originally for the team, but not being able to choose Electros forced me to put the team in another direction. Now, in the last three turns of the draft, I made a crucial mistake. I, for some reason, I thought that Lee Vanny was something that people might pick. I'm not really sure why I thought that, but I really should have, after Neuvern, I should have drafted Sandslash. Um, I believe I was sniped from, uh, from Sandslash by, that's right, by the Parasite Germain by Shroom Raver. He took Sandslash away. I think I got home from work that night and went to sleep. Got up the next morning. Oh, it's my turn for the draft. I went Sandslash. And I happened to go check the sheet. And Sandslash was gone. So I really should have picked it um, when I picked Lee Vanny. Because I picked Lee Vanny. Then it came back around. And I I should have just picked Sandslash before Lee Vanny. Sandslash overall is, is more useful for a team. Even if it doesn't have sand running. But then I could have had two Sand Rush Pokemon, which would have been incredible, because I didn't want Excadrill. I had already used Excadrill in the Indigo League of Legends, so I didn't want to use Excadrill in that league. Uh, I'm really, in my in my brain, the Eterna City Enders is composed of all these different types of Pokemon, but those teammates are sitting the season out or doing something like that because they are taking a break. So, in my brain, it allows me to not only make more interesting content generally, but it makes me more experienced with different types of Pokemon. So that's why I didn't want to choose Excadrill, otherwise he would have been up there in my top three picks, most likely. But all that aside, I ended up picking Kabutops. Now Kabutops may seem like a very strange choice. Uh, overall, he doesn't really have any synergy with my team, I'd say. I already have a Rock-type Pokemon with Tyranitar, and he actually just compounds the fighting weakness besides Megalopony and Tyranitar uh, a good bit. In addition to all that, he's also four times weak to grass, which Tyranitar is also weak to grass. It's just not, it seems like it's not a good pick. But when you look at it more appropriately, it's unlikely that I would run Kabutops alongside every single other Pokemon that is weak to the same things that Kabutops is weak to. Of course, the important point number two is going to be that Kabutops is an awesomely designed Pokemon. He has sickles, he completely evolved from living in the water to hunt its prey on land, and that's why he's going to be useful here in the Pokemon Premier League. Now, he not only gets the priority with Aqua Jet, he gets a boost from the Sandstorm if I do, on for, for some weird reason, decide to run alongside Tyranitar. So that will allow him to live a little bit more of the special side and get off a of Swords Dance. He will be able to Rapid Spin and set up Stealth Rocks if I need a defensive pivot that can do so. I think at this point... It was just really important for me to get a spinner, and I don't like Armaldo. Uh, I, I don't like Avalug. I don't like anything that's going to be spinning away the rocks that's weak to rocks. To me, that doesn't make sense to run in a draft format generally. But to each their own. Kabutops also nicely gives me some well-needed water coverage that this team needs. I actually drafted Toxicroak. Uh, he has dry skin, so that allowed me to have something to take water hits. But water is a really nice offensive typing so I wanted to be able to duel out that damage as well. Furthermore, Kabutops is literally my second most favorite Pokemon of all time. It's about time that I use it in a league, darn it. I've already used Venusaur and Drapion and Zapdos. Why not Kabutops? Uh, but since I have Kabutops, I needed to get my other uh, Sand Rush Pokemon. 
I didn't think anyone else was going to draft Stoutland because the only reason you would have Stoutland generally is if you have Sandstorm to go with it. Granted, a defensive Stoutland can be pretty useful with Intimidate, which you might see me use if I don't see Sand being really, really useful in a draft league battle. But for the most part, you're going to see Stoutland being run alongside Talonflame and Tyranitar. Uh, Stalin not only gets some pretty good coverage, actually, now that he gets play rough, in addition to Crunch, Superpower, Fire Fang, and Wild Charge, and of course Return or Retaliate. So with that coverage, I can hit anything super effectively for the most part, outside of something weird like, uh, it would have to be, no, because he gets Ice Fang too, so I'm not sure what he couldn't hit super effectively, but Stalin has the coverage to make that happen, and so speed combined with coverage really cements the, kind of the end of the team in there, and since I can get rid of things like burns or paralysis on Stoutland, definitely not worried about him being status as much with Florges around. So that's going to be the Eterna City Enders for the Pokemon Premier League Season 2. It was really fun to see the drafting strategies of the other coaches. Uh, some of the coaches, of course, this is not their first time in the Pokemon Premier League, so it was interesting to see how, because of course I can just go look at their YouTube channels and see if they participated before. And so those who participated before kind of drafted more like me, where they left one or two team slots open and really focused around a, a general team structure. And then there were those that took my ladder strategy where it's like, I just want to use this. Um, and I think that all those factors combined are going to make for a really interesting season for the Pokemon Premier League. So with Shroom Reaver being, I think only two people used uh, all their team slots and Shroom Reaver use all of his team slots and he still didn't run out of pounds which is that's some extreme couponing there because some of the pokemon he got are really good and they aren't priced that high at all starting off with victini and empoleon and chestnut and then getting thunderous incarnate in the middle of the draft definitely an interesting drafting strategy there and ending with mega Audino, which can be a defensive behemoth um, i'm really looking forward to facing that team I think that overall my team has a good matchup against it right now. Really gonna, I hope to see some more replays from him just so I can get an idea of how he's using some of his other Pokemon, uh, such as Furfru or Scyther. Um, Cause if you're kind of not prepared for the more unexpected sets that some of those lower tier Pokemon use, they can really sweep through your team cause they'll be unexpectedly bulky. Now, of course, Erasmus of the Miami Rotom Heat definitely was more like my own draft in my opinion with the only, uh, the only, I guess, stranger, I don't know if strange is the right word, the more unique pick for him, of course, being Tauros. And Tauros in lower tiers is incredibly powerful, so seeing it in a draft format is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, I think that lower tier Pokemon are much more useful in a draft format where they won't necessarily be going up against this top, the same top 10 OU Pokemon over and over and over again. Uh, of course, he also drafted Mega Aggron and Zoroark, Zoroark alongside things like Tornadus T and Electros, and to a lesser extent alongside Tauros, it has similar coverage to a lot of those Pokemon. So Zoroark can very easily disguise itself, or at least make you think that something is hitting you when it's not really that Pokemon or it is. Really have to be careful of some tricky shenanigans there. Uh, of course, he also has Clefable with which out uh, without my um, Toxicroak. My team quite struggles against Clefable, so happy I have Toxicroak for that particular matchup. Of course, Evelyn with the Hurtier Bremen, uh, she has a pretty interesting draft, ending with Oddish, beginning with Infernape. That is highly unexpected. I, I'm assuming she's going to use Oddish as some secret uh, recipe, secret family recipe, where I'm just not sure what she's going to do with Oddish, but I look forward to seeing it. She has some pretty threatening options with really fast Pokemon like Infernape and Azelf that can go mixed and do different things. Um, running Stealth Rocks or fully offensive, special or physical or all sorts of things. Uh, of course, Dredagon has a few interesting tricks too. I, of course, use Dredagon back in Fitchin a lot, utilizing Sucker Punch or Rocky Helmet alongside uh, the Rough Skin to punish people who are U-turning. Uh, Mega Blastoise is just a powerhouse that is not to be trifled with. And of course, Zapdos, my third favorite Pokemon of all time. Uh, don't want to really go up against Zapdos, but we're going to have to at some point. So I'm looking forward to fighting her. Uh, Raikwin, again, sorry for the snipe, but uh, definitely looking forward to facing Raikwin as well. I really like watching his content, and I know he's a very competent battler. 
So I look forward to see how he's how he rather he has basically all of his Pokemon are really versatile except for Halucha. Um, to a lesser extent, Darmanitan. But otherwise, everything there can for, can form at least one or two different roles in a, any given team. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how he kind of utilizes different Pokemon in different roles. The Portland Timbers, of course, we know from the LBA. Uh, here once again with just team power coming right out of the gate with Sylveon and Latios. That is going to be difficult to fight against. That's just slinging around power, basically. Uh, and I can't just switch in Toxicroak because then he gets smacked by Psychic Attacks. So it's going to be interesting. Of course, he did also draft the uh, Rotom Heat, which I always find it interesting when another team drafts another team's mascot. I don't know. That's why I kind of want to change my logo because I'm not using Mega Venusaur. But anyways, though, uh, next up, of course, we have the, the FC EV tons here with Latias, Azumarill, Cobalion, Entei, and Amoongus and Thunderous T. Even with all that, he still manages to fit in more bulk with Swampert, Claydol, Regirock, and Drapion. Uh, so definitely, I think that's probably the fattest team here easily. So that's not going to be particularly fun to go up against, and I can't even rely on Toxic, because he has several things that are immune to Toxic. Not good. Not good at all. It's going to be fun. Uh, the Pittsburgh Pyroar have, of course, the Caesar draft right in round one, which is a very powerful pick for a draft format, considering how versatile Caesar is. And just having priority steal with so many fairies running around is nice, generally. Uh, I did think it interesting that he drafted Masharna as his fourth pick, which to me opens up some interesting trick room shenanigans that we might see. Uh, of course, uh, Domfan, Kecleon, Lantern, Conkledur, and Dragalge are all pretty relatively slow. Some of them have more middling speed, middle of the road speed, but they're all relatively slow. So definitely might see some trick room shenanigans there. I really hope he uses Sawsbuck and at some point puts up Sunny Day and just tries to destroy someone because Sawsbuck with Drum Kick is so much fun. Quite sad that it lost the nature, nature Power Earthquake, but then was the breaks when you're changing generations. Uh, the Osaka Eevees, run by the Shadow Gaming Hub, drafting Mega Venusaur in the first round. I am so proud. Mega Venusaur, just so, so good. So very good. Uh, of course, also with Arcanine, Mesprit, and Crocodile. Very, very powerful start to the draft right there. I think he rounds it out really, really nicely with... Um, a little bit more speed than bulk, but he definitely started off pretty bulky. Arcanine with Intimidate, running bulky sets with Morning Sun. Uh, Mesprit is just good all around for the most part, having 105 in almost all of its stats. Um, being able to run offensive stats or defensive stats or supportive sets, it can do a lot. Uh, Crocodile is kind of seen in a, a few more relegated roles with Scarf or um, trying to set up and just Pursuit Trap some Pokemon. Jellicent can run physically defensive or specially defensive, and it can also be specially offensive. Gramble is another Pokemon that's definitely relegated to a few uh, roles overall. But then having all those fast Pokemon in the last slots except for Rhydon and Dual Blade, that's going to be interesting how he pairs up the speed with the, the bulk. He only has a couple of Pokemon that can use U-Turn or uh, Volt Switch. So it's gonna, I think playing a team like that definitely requires a lot more prediction. But I definitely like the fire, water, grass core that he has going on with Venusaur, Arcanine, and Jellicent. I can get behind that. Um, now the Celta Dino, Mega Altaria as the first choice in the draft. And then having Mega Altaria and Skarmory and Staraptor in the same team, you have the possibility there of bird spam on top of just setting up Mega Altaria and sweeping the crap out of someone with entry hazards. So, things to be aware of, for sure, with that team. Uh, this is the team, of course, that also has Ditto, which means that I can't run anything that can set up against that team, which is unfortunate, but you don't want to give your opponent all those boosts on a Scarf Ditto that will then just outspeed you and crush your whole team. Now, then after that, we have the, um, whoops, there we go. We have, all right, then after that, we have the team by Shady, which I was really, really interested to see that he actually picked up uh, Togekiss and Manaphy in the first two rounds. Very, very solid picks. Manaphy, generally more of a special attacker, of course, 
But Togekiss is hilariously versatile, as I have shown in the LBA when I'm using Togekiss, and I have, I think I have nine different Togekiss bred now. It would be so much easier if it didn't evolve by a shiny stone. You could just hard scale the moves back. But anyways, there are a lot of different things you can expect from Togekiss, and it's kind of hard to pin down. Uh, but I did find the, the tail end of his draft really interesting. He ended on Mega Aerodactyl, which I was surprised that no one else picked, first of all. And he also picked up Garbord or Behem and Curum, all right after one another. Uh, Garbodor, I think, has a lot more utility than a lot of people give it credit for. Being able to set up toxic spikes or spikes. Aftermath means if you hit it with a physical attack, you're going to lose a good chunk of HP. And of course, alongside something like Behem, setting up a trick room, we have the potential for some gunk shot trash can sweepage. Uh, Behem hits incredibly hard off of choice specs with the analytic boost. You really don't want to switch out of Behem too much, or something's going to take a huge chunk of damage. Uh, and Kurium is actually pretty versatile too, being able to run physical or special sets or mixed sets. Um, it can also set up with a substitute. Uh, it's important to keep Kurium in check, but fortunately it's very weak to all sorts of entry hazards and lots of priority. So I'm not too worried about Kurium, unless uh, he kind of dismantles the rest of my team first. Um, and then finally we have Don Fanatic's team in Division 2, the Norwich Skitty. Running Heatran and Weavile right in the first two draft picks. You guys have seen how much Weavile just dismantles teams by itself. Weavile is actually one of the reasons I chose my draft in the order that I did. Because if you can check a Pokemon like Weavile, you're actually doing pretty well. So knowing that I can relatively handle Weavile pretty easily with just the first few of my Pokemon, I like my team's odds against a draft as, as well-rounded as his. He has basically offensive, defensive, offensive, defensive, flip-flopping back and forth all the way down his draft, sometimes repeating. But that means that he has a well-rounded draft, and he has Fortress and Mega Slowbro on the same team. Great. That's just going to be such a fun core to break through. Uh, but you know what? It's certainly a challenge that our team is up to. And so each of these teams have things that I'm really excited to face. Uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this intro to the Pokemon Premier League. Very happy that I get to participate once again. And uh, it's time to start breeding my Pokemon, because there's going to be a lot of things that I need. So if you guys enjoy, just let me know. Let me know what you're excited for for the Pokemon Premier League. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.